Gather round. Old Uncle Googs is gonna tell us a tale. Sundar Pichai. Oh shit. Brings Big man. I know, right? <laughs> Throws a crowbar on the stage. <laughs> Half Life Three confirmed. Right, it's got game tied down. Uh, it's great to be here. Thank you all for joining us. I suppose I should start out with a confession. Uh -oh. I'm actually not a big gamer, uh, though I do play <laughs> don't say. quite a bit, and really enjoy how immersive it is. I also play Ashes Cricket quite a bit. And for those of you who are wondering what cricket is, it's kind of like baseball, but better. In Australia, maybe. Another little known hey. fact is that Google makes <laughs> arguably the most played game on the internet today. It's the Dino Chrome game, mostly played when there's no internet connection. Yeah, not he's got a point. The high quality <laughs> graphics and sophistication. It's been a minute since I've seen that one. <laughs> But it does have yeah. a lot of players, and I probably log more hours than I care to admit. Yours. While I'm not a big gamer, I do have the. There's a lot of internet downtime. Working at a company and leading a company full of people who love to solve hard computer science problems. For many Googlers, their journey with computers started with games. Games have inspired many generations of people to pursue careers in tech. And through that process, Jensen, no, no, just Jensen's leather jacket's going to bust <laughs> through that. <laughs> like, take him down. He's like, game's ours, rawr. Solving hard problems. And within Google I'm going to call it right now. I mean, it, we're just going to see Project Stream, and they're like, hey, look, here's a gaming enhanced uh, Chrome stick. Go have fun. Maybe a control. Yeah. DeepMind's AlphaZero uses self And they could easily, like, build something into the controller to work as a console. Maybe it's just a controller, man, a Chromecast. Yeah. Like, right from the controller. General yep. purpose system that can learn to solve many foundational problems. <laughs> More recently, AlphaStar became the first AI to defeat a top professional player at StarCraft II, using a deep neural network trained Kay. directly <laughs> from raw game data. Increasingly, games are helping AIs learn to tackle real-world challenges. Even beyond DeepMind, another great example we have is Waymo, where we use simulations in gaming-like environments. We play games where we run over people. Actually possible or safe <laughs> we, we have self-driving cars that are just in playing fact, games. <laughs> this is a game. Simulations of HK scenarios <laughs> that vehicles wouldn't normally encounter. And we use it no Linux Neuro, I, I don't think Goobs is going to buy Nintendo. Maybe they'll buy the Atari VCS. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the biggest impact of gaming is how it pushes us to make big leaps in computing. And oh, look, Ven played that game. Uh, yeah, I did. And the infrastructure that <laughs> Looked about as good streaming, too. Mm -hmm. Computing and technology forward, and I find that really exciting. At Google, we've always believed that technology <laughs> should adapt to people, not the other way around. We've been building towards this vision for some time. For example, when we launched Chrome a decade ago, we imagined, we envisioned that it could be a modern platform for web applications and bring the power. Well, it was certainly a fast one. Including use cases that seem you, you could actually that browse web like zones mm -hmm. with a single core. And finally, we are making progress yep. towards that goal. In fact, over the past two years, we've been hard on work, hard at work on game streaming technology. <laughs> hard on work, all, yes. Hard on work, <laughs> man. Listen, 2019, Google gets <laughs> sexy. A technical test wasn't the whole view of our ambition. It was probably the worst kept secret in the industry. Internally, we were actually testing our ability to stream high fidelity graphics. Self-driving horses this year. From mm -hmm. <laughs> we learned that we could bring a AAA game to any device with a Chrome browser and an internet connection. In the U.S., Using yes. The best of Google to create a part Quit hating of freedom, platform. Pedro. <laughs> and when we Look. say best of Google, it always starts with our cloud and networking infrastructure. Our custom server hardware and data centers can bring more computing power to more people on planet Earth than anyone else. Today, we are in 19 regions and in over 200 countries and territories connected by hundreds of thousands of miles of fiber optic cable. Mm -hmm. 
Yes. <laughs> Google, I used to care about that until you basically stopped rolling out uh, Google Fiber. So. <laughs> Not better. Not better. <laughs> Maybe a little better. <laughs> US only, <laughs> and even then. <laughs> and we have plans to support more browsers and platforms over time. That's in addition to all the people- I can't hear you over my half gig connection that I effectively make a car payment for every month. And when we build these ecosystems, <laughs> we always take the approach that we only succeed- Yeah, and when he says multiple partners. browsers, he means Chrome and Edge. Collectively, our partners across web, Google Since they're Bain, just going to be the same. Have earned more What's than up, airplane boy? Arthurian's going to get on an airplane. Past four years alone. Oh, nice. And we have committed to this approach here as well. So now we have focused on our next big effort, which is to build a game platform for everyone. Better not be hard, And when but... we say for everyone, we really mean it. Okay. It's one of our most cherished values as a company. Be it Android or Chrome or AI, we are dead serious about making technology accessible for everyone. That is serious as you were of the Google Plus. Think about games, mm -hmm. there are a lot of barriers soon. for users to play <laughs> <in> games. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful graphics really need high end consumption. Hi, Google. News reader. Yeah, this goes on. <laughs> that link shortener that, that I used because I mistakenly thought, man, I better use one that'll never get nuked. <laughs> Surprise. That Instantly enjoyable with access for everyone. I think we can change the game by yeah, putting anyways. together the Yolo. power and creativity of the entire community. People who love to play games. People who love to watch games and people. I mean, that's your YouTube games. business model. <laughs> that means all of you. We are really excited to work Okay, with under and over there, there being the a like legit free tier that's ad supported. Possible. And together, I think we can create a new game. <laughs> now we're going to pause now your game for two minutes yes. while we watch an ad. Yes. <laughs> Let's take a look. From the beginning of time, games have brought us together players and spectators. By the handful, the hundreds and the thousands. As someone who plays we golf, I don't understand it. Places to gather around yeah. every kind <laughs> of spectacle. Glory, tragedy. Yeah, Kubrick. That's <laughs> legit the graveyard. Rivalry and wonder. And we're not even Until counting like the 30 messaging town, apps that are going to get killed. Yeah, yeah. Like Hangouts them. came to replace. Um, Google Chat or Google Talk? <laughs> Hello. <laughs> yeah. This new era of gaming needs a new place to gather. One place. I don't know. When I was um, using Project Stream, I mean, it mostly worked. If you played with a controller, I didn't have a problem with it. And, you know, client side, it was clearly doing some things to try, you know, just predictive. I'm sure that's where some of the AI is coming in. Movement to compensate for latency. With a controller, it was completely viable with Assassin's Creed. The second you used keyboard and mouse, you're like, oh no. So. Where everyone will play. Yeah, because as soon as you grab the mouse, you expect that immediate movement. It's like, okay, I'm doing this. It's not doing it. <laughs> <laughs> What's well, kind of like, um, is this just a thing with uh, Shadow of War? The like, when you hit forward, it takes a second before um, Mr. Ranger. Oh, uh, there's a bit moving. of a wind up. Yeah. yeah. It did that in the first one too. Yeah, I think it did. Yeah. It, it's just been a while since I touched it, and I tried it the other day on Proton, and, and but I was like, ooh, that'll take a minute to get... All right. He's back. Welcome to Stadia. We are so excited by this. To do this well, it's important that we have the right people working on this. Jensen Smash, rawr. Industry and heritage and games. We bought AMD. Phil Harrison, who joined us about a year ago. He's a great leader and a great gamer. He's definitely someone who knows the difference between RPGs and NPCs. I'm going to pass the mic over Google to Google Stream is going to work for open world games. Things like Thank that. that. <laughs> oh, girlfriend, look at those girls with the red shoes. It is like he's those wearing Pumas, Pedro's man. microwaves, man. Thank you, so, uh, it's such 
a pleasure to be here today, and thank you for joining us at GDC as we finally get to share Google's vision for the future of games. Where the worlds of watching and playing games converge into a new generation game platform, purpose built for the 21st century, powered by the best of Google. Our vision for Stadia is simple. One place for all the ways we play. It's focused on gamers. We would like to be the Netflix of gaming. And amplified yes. by <laughs> creators. Today, our industry captivates over 2 billion players from all okay, around the world. Okay, it's still wind up. Okay, we're still selling it. <laughs> Look at us. We're pretty good. The, game developers, <laughs> the people in this room that create the most incredible game experiences Dual that delight button, players pocket buttons, with engrossing like stories, characters, buttons. and worlds through a dazzling display of technology, oh, artistry, <laughs> and magic. Games are now the single biggest form of entertainment on the planet, one that connects a vast community across geographies, cultures, and language. And within that passionate community, there is a universe of people who love playing games, and there's a universe of people who love watching games. Hundreds of millions of people watch gaming content every single day. I do both. But those you can do both. <laughs> I can't read. Fragmented, <laughs> often independent of each other. Our vision is to bring those worlds closer together, to connect game developers. You mean like players, these two monitors? Created in a way that only Google can. I play video games on this one, and I watch them on this one. <laughs> vibrant gaming community for everyone to enjoy. Through the power of our data centers, the extraordinary reach and community of YouTube. And our investments in the stereotype, stereotype, stereotype. No, man. <laughs> listen, listen. We when you start a game, it's going to go, what up, guys? It's your boy, <laughs> yeah. um, Assassin's Creed. We'll be handing that extraordinary power of the day to Kick a hole through your TV. You, game developers, where playgrounds As one does. Every imagination Smash that free. subscribe button, fam. <laughs> our first public test of this game in October of last year. With There's a lot of them that actually say that. It's, it's sad. At up to 1080p and 60 frames per second over the internet. As somebody part of the beta, to a Chrome browser, technically, we were humbled by the overwhelmingly <laughs> positive response from players who were able 1080p. to join Project Stream. A huge thank you to those of you who yeah. participated in Project Stream. Yeah. Over 1080p by um, 1920. Also, yes. The amazing people at Ubisoft <laughs> for trusting us with the latest incarnation of their incredible game franchise, Assassin's Creed. Ubisoft. Ubisoft has always been at the forefront of advancements in the games industry, and they have an incredible track record of success and creativity. And joining us here in the audience today, I'm delighted to welcome the CEO and co-founder of Ubisoft, Eve Gimo. Thank you, Eve. CEO of Ubisoft? Yeah, OK. <laughs> We I'd found like a way to make it only Eve work on Windows browsers. Partnering with us, mm -hmm. producer Mark Alexi Cote and the entire Ubisoft Quebec studio for their masterpiece. <laughs> you need to download Chrome through UPlay to be able to play it. Thank you for bringing it only works on Microsoft Edge. And congratulations <laughs> for being the first game played by the public on Stadia. As many of you experienced with Assassin's Creed Odyssey, we now have the ability to take a sophisticated, graphically intense AAA game and stream it to a Chrome browser running on a simple laptop without any sacrifice to the quality or vision of the game developer. <clears throat> as successful as Project Stream was, our ambition is, of course, far beyond a single game. As we developed our strategy for this new platform, we asked developers how we can help solve some of the most critical Now we got to think about the microtransactions. Face. How do you there work that in a streaming very service? Clear themes that resonated. You Google Wallet's you a thing? To unleash your creativity without <laughs> Get to the widest possible scale. I mean, that's already there. They just need to integrate it. We used these three themes to anchor our vision and build our platform architecture and began to share it with the leading publishers and developers in the world. Now, let me show you how we have brought this vision to life. Imagine you are watching games on YouTube and you discover the latest Assassin's Creed Odyssey trailer on Ubisoft's official channel on YouTube. You will notice so the play we're doing now doing theoretical button. stuff, got it. By simply mm -hmm. clicking on that button, the player is brought directly into the game in a browser in as quick as five seconds. With no download. That's a damn That's a bold line. claim. <laughs> That's a bold claim there, Cotton. <laughs> this was With not no my download, experience. 
no patch, no update, and no And you're in the U.S. too. You're Stadia like the target audience. <laughs> Our platform vision for Stadia is to reduce the friction between getting excited about a game and playing your a game. Wallet. On Stadia, you just need to click on a YouTube video or link, and you can be playing your game instantly. Compare that to today, where gamers are all too familiar Integrating with, it with like existing products makes a lot of sense, yes. With Stadia, this waiting game <laughs> Which is going to make it even harder when they kill it and to, you know, get rid of everything. <laughs> instant access is magical and has already transformed the music... Four and hours and 20... Man, I downloaded it is now 103 the games yesterday and it almost took 30 <laughs> but minutes. wouldn't it be even more magical if that same yeah. game... And that same Co-worker Nathan moved recently and his internet sucks right now. So he's one of those people. <laughs> a key benefit of our platform is that a single creative vision and a single code base can now be enjoyed instantly across well, any screen. I mean, there's something to be said At going launch, to work. We'll support being able to play games across desktops, laptops, what happened to TV, the stream? <laughs> tablets, and phones. <laughs> This Did that dude dragging the thing? Oh, there we go. That wasn't me, bro. <laughs> I guess that dude, when he was dragging something across the stage, clipped one of the cables. And no console that limits where gamers can play. That, that, you've merely witnessed the mischief of Jensen's leather jacket concept, as it runs a mark. I'd like to bring my friend Khaled to the stage to show you this working. There's a game demo, so yeah, this is uh, most certainly befitting of GDC or E3 so or just any of the just other one. Imagine you that game for the first time, you're running it on the Chrome browser, and here it is on a Pixel Book uh, running the Chrome OS. There is basically no hardware acceleration on that laptop whatsoever, and the game is oh, running... Oh, come on, that's got an i3 at least, or an i5 at least. It can go up to an i7. To that same game experience <laughs> from exactly that moment onto the phone, here on a Pixel 3 XL. Ladies and gentlemen, it can play accelerated H.264 video, no probably H65. <laughs> and it has the basic, yeah, it has the basic, um, PC we could find here. Um, and Chrome we could, sticky uh, thing. Enjoy the What's it called? Chromecast. Chromecast, yes. Chromecast, Chromecast, yes. <laughs> Chromecast functionality of just sending it to the Chromecast and it's starting from the exact same point. Mm, we're going to work very hard not to uh, cause a bad English again, loop between the two of us. It's not pretty. Yes. <laughs> our, uh, PC to running on a tablet. Uh, in this case, once again, uh, running the Chrome uh, OS uh, on a Pixel Slate. Okay, tell us about that controller. <laughs> We've seen the slate before. Tell us about the controller. <laughs> and then finally, we then move seamlessly to the TV. And so this TV is accessed using this. Tell me, man, the Chromecast the is Chromecast going to be built into the control. Ultra HDMI streamer. There is no console required to reach this experience. No console required, so yeah, there it is. <laughs> Thanks, Khaled. Great presentation. If we're Welcoming honest, that would be a very easy presentation to fake. It's fundamental to Stadia, where you can try with your friends on devices you already own. And as such, we're also enabling players to use your existing USB controller or mouse and keyboard when playing now, I will say this, when I was doing the uh, Assassin's Creed thing uh, friction, with Chrome, with the USB X phone controller, just pick that up out of the box. Yep. no problem. But of course, we will have our own controller that has been uniquely designed to enhance the experience for the Stadia player. There it is. I'd it's like got to a speaker on it. It can scream ads at you. Hardware family, the Stadia controller. That looks... Those triggers look very much like the uh, DualShock triggers. It looks like a diseased <laughs> Nintendo controller. This is your gateway to the yeah. best of Stadia. It enables you to access the full Stadia experience. And there are many However, I like the DualShock thing. Oh. And the first yeah. is that it will connect <laughs> through Wi-Fi directly to the game that is running in the Google Data Center. 
The Stadia controller yep. identifies the Chromecast the is built into the controller. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> Behold my psychic abilities at <laughs> figuring out the most obvious play. thing to do with it. In addition to the standard functions, you Nvidia built the shield the inside game. the controller, so the yeah. Stadia Listen, this just means that you can go around to places, you know, especially display TVs <laughs> at like uh, yeah. and malls and venues that didn't have that disabled properly and start playing games. Mm -hmm. The gamer can choose more gaming. <laughs> There's going to be some news made about the that. They are in control. <laughs> and the second one is the Google Assistant button. Pressing this button allows players to immediately access the controller's built-in microphone so they can get help from the assistant. <laughs> so special in-game features. Swing and a miss. Now you have oh, you could have named the controller Our operator, so I could have went operator. Mm -hmm. Finally. At every level. And next, we'll take a look at the incredible computing power we have custom built into our data centers that will further accelerate innovation. I'd like to introduce my friend and colleague, the head of engineering for Stadia, Marsh Bakar. Thanks so much, Bill. <laughs> Let's look at the real-time computing power we have put into our data centers that will change how we view what a game platform can be. In order to deliver an amazing experience for your games, we needed to bring powerful computing closer I didn't see the Konami code on the back. Maybe if you enter that, they'll revive Google+. Yeah. Google <laughs> network. The same network that has been delivered... Or activate Skynet. Who knows? In milliseconds it's a risk more I'm willing years. to take, Pedro. <laughs> the network consists of fiber optic links and subsea cables between hundreds of points of presence and more than 7,500 edge node locations around the globe. That's right, Googs. Everyone watching this, no idea backbone. about this. Mm -hmm. Stadia no. is built on infrastructure that no one else has. More edge nodes mean the compute resources are closer to players, which results in better performance. We took that proven model and infused it with custom design, purpose-built gaming hardware creating the most powerful and connected gaming platform. Each of Stadia's data center is composed of interconnected me not to play hidden object that games deliver the high-power graphics yeah, no. <laughs> and storage needed to run the most demanding games. <laughs> Only with Google can you apply the power and flexibility of data centers to game development. This architecture is the foundation for this new generation of gaming. We've been testing this technology privately within Google for years. Mm -hmm. For our initial public test with Project Stream in 2018, we delivered up to 1080p 60 frames per second with stereo audio. Up to, there we go. <laughs> when Stadia launches, we will have increased performance significantly to support Snap. resolutions up to 4K There's the 4K. 4K. 60 yep. frames per second. Take a shot. <laughs> with HDR and surround sound. <laughs> And in the future, we'll be able to stream games in up to 8K resolution. Take two shots. Yeah, it was <laughs> right. Okay. Now, a lot of you are like me. You're sitting back going, have you watched the UHD video on YouTube? We have built our platform to scale up with I've the highest seen a couple, just because I wanted to see the pixel density on the screen. That's what I'm saying. Gamers <laughs> and game developers. What's Let me rephrase that, Pedro. Have you watched the UHD video on YouTube at 43.5 inches? There is a second no. simultaneous <laughs> stream at 4K 60 frames per second. 24.1. To share directly to YouTube from the Stadia data center. <laughs> Meaning your gaming memories will be saved at the highest possible quality. Oh, so you can Stadia just stream directly to YouTube what you're seeing. Cool. <laughs> Instead, we have built a truly flexible, scalable, and modern platform that allows us to push performance beyond what was previously considered possible. This architecture gives us even more flexibility to scale. Scale. And thanks to fast transfer speeds between the Stadia Ultimately, this is going to lower the bar for entry for game streaming because it's not low enough already. I look forward to that <laughs> dog nope. Along with the need of your game. <laughs> I mean, if anyone has the infrastructure to pull it off, to it's Google. To tone down the creative ambitions that are limited by the hardware. 
But our vision with Stadia... Well, I mean, it is, is Google, don't worry. I mean, this will be, they'll kill it for no reason in four months. To, ma to match <laughs> imagination. Maybe not four months, but a couple of years, in yeah. this <laughs> new generation, the data center is your platform. So it's going to be running on we Linux. We with our friends at AMD <laughs> to build a custom GPU. I'd like to nope. personally thank oh. Dr. Lisa Stu, AMD president and CEO, who is here with us today. <laughs> that put the kibosh on that really quickly. <laughs> designed a chip to bring you more than 10 teraflops of power, which is coupled with a custom CPU to make up a single Stadia instance. Well, if anyone has the money to afford HBM2, it's Google. The graphical power of Stadia compares to the top two consoles. Yeah, they probably got out laying around on news. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> okay, so each instance is more you powerful the, than a console. Stadia That's not the good big step thing. Forward. 10.7 teraflops <laughs> is more powerful than the top two consoles of the previous generation combined. Mm -hmm. So is that Xbox 360 Steam box that I built? What's Stadia your point? will be using the Linux operating system oh. and the open graphics API Vulkan. And when it comes to game engines... Oh, come on, keep talking some smack, Pedro. You were doing good. We have partnered with Unreal. Epic. We fully supporting the Stadia platform. <laughs> we're also partnering with Unity. In a move to confuse and anger people. <laughs> Yes. Okay, Unity, yeah, that's the obvious choice. They support everything. We're, we're only going to get the Epic Store and we'll stream. That you already used to power <laughs> game development, including the most popular physics engine, Havoc. And here's a list <laughs> yeah, of Havoc is everywhere. now. <laughs> and of course, this list will continue to grow over time. With the suite of tools, game development can evolve as quickly as the imagination of content creators. Visual Studio. Yeah, we keep that, that. Yeah. We're providing multiple <laughs> ways to make games for Stadia. You can develop on our cloud, your cloud, and at your desk. Our goal is to make. I gotta Stadia mention the that they got RGB in the server room. Ever put together. That bothers me. Of course they do. <laughs> they needed to take pictures. <laughs> that better be lighting in HDR. Our first guest is from a company known for creating the most sophisticated. And let's face it, those LEDs they probably generate a lot less heat than any ceiling lights ever would. <laughs> We had the chance to give our friends at I mean, I never wanted to stab a rock before until today. <laughs> it's my absolute pleasure to welcome to the stage executive producer from ID, Marty Stratton. Okay, so Bethesda's on board. <laughs> we'll finally get Skyrim on Linux. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Thanks so much for having us here, Phil and Maj. I'm honored to be part of a team at ID that has spent more than 25 years on the bleeding edge of technical innovation. When we first met with Google about game streaming, frankly, we were skeptical about how it would work. And, and they cut us That is a good point there, Rohit. <laughs> what? With a game like Doom. The, when However, they put the Vulcan uh, logo on screen, that's probably the first a lot of people first heard of it. Be quiet. DX12 is the future, <laughs> bro. <laughs> but Doom is running Vulcan. DX12 is the one protocol you can write once and, <laughs> and uncompromising. then write it again for the other yeah. thing that yeah, also supports right. it. Yes, and enough, then write it again enough. for that Windows 7 implementation. <laughs> so picky, man. You're part of the problem. <laughs> and if you're going to prove to a developer that you're serious about building a robust platform, what better team than id, where we push every platform to its limit. In fact, in Including players' patience. Oh, no, Doom wait, that's your publisher. Never mind. Game <laughs> you mean Zinemax? On Vulcan. And because Stadia is built or Bethesda. <laughs> they swap roles like they nobody's business. <laughs> Are you politely telling me that all this stuff can run on Linux, you just cannot has? Unless you stream. Or Proton. Action Thank you, Val. Action FPS experience. <laughs> You play as an unstoppable hero sent to destroy hell's fiercest demons across an expanding universe of unbelievable locations. We couldn't be happier to be Nicholas bringing Cage Doom Eternal is the and are thrilled to announce <laughs> the game will be no, wait, that's at 4K resolution with HDR color at an unrelenting 60 frames per second. Unrelenting. Unrelenting. Okay. Is that going to be the uh, buzzword nowadays? <laughs> no, it's just like yeah, 144, man. Very soon, in fact. 
<laughs> we have the full game running on Stadia live from Google Data Centers. I mean, I've seen Google Chrome struggle to keep deck. 60 FPS on its composited layer in some websites. We're going to say this. Um, <laughs> Thank it, you to Google and Stadia. Do have Stadia some faith in this. They do. This they have a lot of confidence in Stadia simply because, hey, man, we're going to give you so an much. FPS. That, that's a tall order. Yeah. And especially one like Doom is fast paced and people know exactly so what to expect Martin. with it. It's a privilege <laughs> to work with Id and your incredible engineers and creators. For anyone who knows the franchise, you know Doom Eternal will look and play amazingly well on our platform. It was important no, we for us don't. to partner with a developer like Id. <laughs> that so was that the point of this little banter just, just now. <laughs> but to the entire industry that our platform is capable of supporting the most demanding titles. And Doom will be running on the a Google. single Stadia <laughs> <and> GPU. <laughs> the fundamental benefit of our cloud native infrastructure is that developers will be able to take advantage of hardware and power in ways never before possible. And that includes taking advantage of the power of multiple GPUs at once. We've asked our friends at UL Benchmarks, <laughs> makers of 3D Mark, to put Stadia to the test. In this video, you can see some comparison points showing the difference between our single <laughs> GPU and multiple GPUs. What you see here on the left of the line is running on a single 10.7 teraflop GPU. All right. And on the right of the line, you can see the same content running on Stadia using multiple GPUs. It looks blurry. In this demo, we're highlighting <laughs> real-time fluid yes. deformation. <laughs> Accurate water simulation is one of the most compute-intensive effects for games. And it's a powerful example of what Stadia is capable of. That's because you're so trying to render to water as a combination of, kind of performance. solids. <laughs> when we designed Stadia, our goal was to dynamics is tough, man. You're going to summon water tea. Developers, <laughs> particularly those related to multiplayer. In traditional platforms, the client and server are connected by the unpredictable internet, and therefore the multiplayer experience is limited by the client with the slowest or poorest quality connection. But with Stadia, that game client and server both remain on Google's networking backbone. <laughs> resulting in predictable low latency. Until it gets to the last mile of the ISP, which is run through um, broken no promises <laughs> and uh, <laughs> public internet. twine. <laughs> Carrier <laughs> pigeons. Data can create a predictable multiplayer experience that scales to an order of magnitude greater than anything enjoyed by gamers today. So what that's that exactly the same as Valve's doing. Yes, very, very good. High volume of Valve's doing it. <laughs> Arthurian, yes, like Microsoft's rolling this out too. This is, the new this is the We're new VR. Royal it's the future. Everyone it's on machine board. learning, players yeah. <laughs> to thousands of players tomorrow. And yes, no cheating and no hacking. Bold claim. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> believe that the world is a better place. Bold claim, God. Really bold claim. And as a new generation game platform, Stadia will, of course, embrace full cross-platform play. Okay. <laughs> Developers will It'll have be the ability easy to, to enable cross-platform multiplayer for all players <laughs> and even bring game saves and progression across as well. I'd now like to introduce yeah. a member of Stadia's I mean, you could use a user agent on PC to play with the console players. <laughs> Please welcome to the stage our lead designer for research and development at Stadia, Erin hoffman John. Thank you, Phil. One of our team's favorite comments about Project Stream What's is going on in that outfit? that describes Stadia's technology yep. as the work of wizards. And we are incredibly fortunate to work with wizards. Oh, is that a wizard day. robe? Is that what you're going for? Okay, for cool. <laughs> hey, man, it's better than I'd the like red to shoes. Through a few technologies yeah. and features <laughs> that we've been working on that are going nice to boots, enhance though. the game development process for developers big and small. The first one is focused on multiplayer. Stadia not it's only. It's online, it better be. Performing multiplayer experiences from player Single to player, player only. but also <laughs> allows developers to create new, gorgeous gaming environments. Our friends at Tangent Games have been working with us on a technical proof of concept that you can see here behind me. They spent a few short weeks creating this beautiful multiplayer world with a persistent, massively destructible environment. Okay. It is a raw demonstration uh -huh. of scale and power using the best of Crackdown Stadia promised the same thing. We all know how that turned out. This multiplayer world is destructible using <laughs> it really looks like the character's wearing a sombrero. 
Mm -hmm. Using Google's unique infrastructure, developers can oh, create so games, completely destructible multiplayer, which means it will be leveled within an hour. Ladies and gentlemen, we would like to introduce <laughs> Blow Shit Up, the game. <laughs> <laughs> As we were building the platform, we collaborated with individuals. People will make a game out of blowing it up before the respawn system kicks in. <laughs> when we thought about our most treasured gaming memories, something kept coming back, something that we'd lost. When modern games start to push the boundaries of current hardware, rendering two or more scenes simultaneously becomes too resource intensive. And so split screen couch co op has been fading from gaming. Mm -hmm. But when all of your clients are in the cloud, couch multiplayer has new life again through Stadia in what we're calling Stream Connect. This is what I was curious past, about. All right. Resources required to execute split-screen co-op have required developers to sacrifice more of their creative goals. With Stream Connect, we're making it possible to realize split-screen multiplayer without any performance penalty. Behind me, you'll see a technology... Yeah, just spin up another instance. There you go, there's yeah, a second player. The Honestly, not really what... I, I would like to see the ability to role. play Here we have local co-op One hunter online. on the ground and a supporting aerial player. Yeah. Set up in a standard split screen view. Each of these screens is powered by a separate Stadia instance. But what would happen? I mean, if, if they can just spin a new instance and create a second one on the same screen, they can easily do it on another screen. <laughs> but Pedro, you need to be amazed in wonder of picture in picture in twenty. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> Again, you're part of the problem. <laughs> mm -hmm, clearly. <laughs> We've shown you three views, but we can keep going. We can keep adding streams and shape how they're shown to the player. Giving a designer not one, but many and cameras into a scene. And can you pass those two other... Now imagine, if you could go beyond seeing into players' worlds, what if you could interact with them? Here we have our streams configured into a command center, where a fourth player can coordinate the movements of our drone, scientist, and hunter characters. Okay. First, you throw now down the no hacking gauntlet, and you've clearly designed a vector mm -hmm. for it. So, yeah. <laughs> get your popcorn ready, kids. <laughs> oh, look, it's an admin console built into the game. Support developers in creating more immersive and creative experiences, whether bringing back effortless couch based co op or inventing entirely new multiplayer games. Our next technology demo yeah, that, on that's the, the basic the one there, the mentor. <laughs> and how they can have an impact on accelerating developer creativity. Every developer feels the burn in pre-production to get to a game's magic sooner. We think Google's machine learning technology might have some answers. Here to talk about it is a developer known for creating some amazing, stylish, and celebrated independent games, including Deadlight, Rhyme, and the Invisible Stainless Hour. Studios, developers Please of Carmageddon and... of Tequila Works, Luz Sancho. <laughs> Tequila Works, okay, yeah. <laughs> Not so good with the Linux, but yeah, all right. <laughs> Thank you, Eric. I am very excited to be here for the unveiling of the Stadia platform. There are so many different benefits that the Stadia delivers to all developers, big and small, and particularly for a studio like ours. At Tequila Works, we are very proud of the art styles of our games. It's something we spend a lot of time perfecting. Our development cycles typically last 24 months, and as you can imagine, a large part of that time is dedicated to defining the art style of the game. It, we are particularly proud of Rhyme, its visual identity created a lasting impression with our players. Rhyme. But it took us a long time yeah. to get to that final 3D style. platformer. <laughs> That's why we were so excited to well, hear I didn't think from it was a visual novel, about one but... of the tools <laughs> we are making available. An amazing tool that will dramatically influence and ease this process. With a style transfer ML, Google is applying the science of machine learning to art visualization. Style transfer is a machine learning technology that runs on the video frame created by the game. All of this happens in real time on a stage. All 15 of them? In that video? Demo, did, did you see the AI for demo <laughs> they were doing it in GDC with NVIDIA with like, you could Bob Ross and case, finger paint and yeah. Yeah. yeah, man, that's and right for a Can't wait. Throw it starry night, and you have another style. Give it scratch art, and you get this. We're doing our part. Ladies and gentlemen, please to announce developer. Instagram feed filters for the video. Yes. Please to announce that thing that Google's been doing with the. 
<laughs> a deep oh, learning network yeah, for a deep long time. Mind nightmare fear yeah. that I can create, which is interesting. I, I, I approve of that. What excites us? A uh, deep some of dream or something, so whatever they call it. How many playable art styles we can create just by feeding it more and more images. It inspires and empowers our artists to get the visions in their heads into interactive environments in a whole new way. And this is just the beginning. We are using a style transfer event in our studio today, and we are blown away by the impact it's having on our latest creations. You will see it. This we'll see a lot of tech demos, I'm everything. sure. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Thank you. It'd be interesting to see a game that actually integrates it properly, but we'll see a lot of tech demos. <laughs> Thank you, Lou. With Style Transfer, our goal is to help developers find the magic of their games quicker. Got to give Google credit, though. Style I mean, as far as GDC goes this year, not cringy. Yeah, creators they're winning. Inspire <laughs> bring the best of Google to games, and creators are at the heart of Stadia. It isn't just what they create, but how those moments are experienced by players. Moments that resonate for generations to come. And of everyone thus far, the she's doing the better job of not today, obviously reading from the uh, the prompter. <laughs> It's called State Share, and here to talk about it from Q Games is Dylan Cuthbert. Hey, not a music. <laughs> hey everyone, Q it's, Games. Uh, great to be here with all of you today. Uh, as a veteran game developer, I love how creators on YouTube have brought our games to life. But I've always wished those experiences could be more social and like even more fun. And I'm extremely excited by what I've learned from Google participation is not a good thing. new ways to share a game's replayable moments. Be quiet. <laughs> so a new technology called State Share. I want to buy Google Bits, G Bits. Yes. Share a playable moment from a game. This could include the world state, the player's position, items they're carrying, anything the developer wants to pack into a shareable moment. The game's state can be encoded into a link that tells Stadia where to pick up the game. This could be sent to one player, or it could be shared with thousands at the same time on YouTube, through email, apps, messaging, or wherever links can go. I would say G plus to just me, to fuck with this them, come totally on. changes how I think about the experiences for players. I can create moments specifically for this kind of sharing. Challenges yeah, to beat my incredible speed runs, and it will or chances be for other players to also experience constantly. the same like, tough <laughs> boss battles. I can you can get people to get good for you. I want, and mm -hmm. let the internet turn my it's like, can someone beat this for me? Thank you. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to <laughs> announce so the uh, new job openings that will be created with this. That I designed a brand new game around it, and it's the biggest time <laughs> now, I'll be recording the game, you play it. Just click right this now, link. Right. Okay, go. Wraps, <laughs> but I can't wait to reveal more about this game later this year. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thanks, Dylan. State Share is one more way that Stadia is working to empower developers with entirely new tools that embrace a player's desire to discover, share, and build a community. We're extremely excited by the re reception it's gotten from our early partners so far. And with that, I'd like to introduce the head of gaming at YouTube to tell you what Stadia means for content creators. <laughs> Please welcome Ryan Wyatt. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Aaron. Ladies and gentlemen, the person responsible for PewDiePie. I'm very excited to be here at the unveiling of Stadia. As you've heard, Stadia is about the best developer experience so that the best games can be made. I don't know. But it's we're just also like committed to making sure we have the YouTube best gaming. creator experience Aren't they killing so that the this? entire community yes. is stronger together. I mean, they're integrating it YouTube into YouTube and making it one thing as it, as, as it always was. But 200 yeah. million gamers <laughs> come to YouTube every single day to engage with their favorite games and creators. And they come because of the community of gaming creators and viewers. They who come to YouTube, YouTube because you got a good search thing, and I need to know how to We're kill this for ways to Batty X and Dark Souls 3. And viewers. Mm -hmm. Stadia is designed <laughs> to bring them together like never before. Or I want something to watch for three hours nonstop because I need something in the background. In 2005. <laughs> and one thing YouTube gaming creators want is to engage with their fans. That will always be the and most important thing. And we've done our best not to give you those tools.
We've made it the single most complex, most obtuse algorithm that you will ever work with. <laughs> you could walk to Pluto and back more than a dozen times. Still <laughs> and you still wouldn't have figured out how the algorithm works. <laughs> 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 well, they gave what's his name a copyright, not even a copyright, a channel strike because he was using the Gleam I.O. Audience. to give away hardware. Creators will have new ways to engage and like, and no, that's taking people off platform. And with a oh god, are they, they doing a Twitch now too? <laughs> by giving you the ability to highlight, live stream, and capture directly from Stadia. We've already seen the idea of any YouTube link being Doesn't a direct Blame also use Google accounts like the OpenID thing? For both big and small <laughs> I'm waiting creators. to hear about Twitch integration on this. <laughs> <to forge deeper laughs> I don't think audience. we will. And one of those ways no. would be to make it easier <laughs> to actually game with them. Often when you're watching a stream, you find yourself wishing you could be uh, in there playing alongside with your favorite creators. On traditional yeah, everyone wishes that. Fire up your console or your PC and just hope that you get matched up with them. It's a horrible However, idea. Have you ever played with, with Stadia, us? And a new yeah. Like, <laughs> I mean, we welcome you, but... <laughs> right in stream ...and jump in and play with YouTube creators that you're watching. Take a look at the video behind me. It's a live stream of NBA 2K. The person watching can simply click the link and be placed into the lobby for the next game. If you think about it, Crowdplay can act like an all-new lobby system for games. And with Stadia, YouTube becomes the ultimate discovery and engagement tool for content. And of course, YouTube creators will have full management capabilities over this feature. To all the game developers, publishers, and the millions oh, of YouTube content creators out public there, public griefing engine. <laughs> Jay Z two said, "All right, that was the uh, YouTube." And got oh, that's the one. Very now, valid point, even though I think you're lowballing a little bit. He has over 11 million <laughs> subscribers on his channel, The Game Theorist, and he and his wife Stephanie have often been advocates for the creator community. So we were delighted to talk to him about Stadia and what it means for creators. Please welcome to the stage my friend Matt Pat. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Ryan. It's an incredible honor to be here today. What are you now, smiling at? He was already gone. <laughs> if I, I was about, if I ever walk out on stage like that, Pedro, put me down. Something has broken. Into the theories behind bending the ink machine, or simply streaming <laughs> gameplay on our live stream channel, GT Live. We're always looking for new Oh, come on. If it weren't for Five Nights at Freddy's, your channel wouldn't be a third of the size that it is. So. You sound jelly. Admittedly, that's why I started Stadia watching his stuff. Because <laughs> I wanted to know what the hell a Five Nights at Freddy's was awesome. and why it was so popular. I got the benefit of being <laughs> old and audience. out of touch. I don't even know what game theory is. For example, gives our audiences the chance to instantly jump into a game with us and then the creator can can feature them live on the stream in real time. Another feature that I'm incredibly excited about is state share. Here, the possibilities are literally endless. Live streaming horror games, for instance, has been one of the most popular formats for live yes, streaming on YouTube PewDiePie. since its inception. <laughs> but now with state share, you can actually take this to the next level by letting the people who are just watching you replicate the exact same scenario you just played through in game. Like that impossible moment when you're out of med kits and you suddenly have a zombie breathing down your neck. Imagine the endless breathing down your neck. Imagine the endless variations that creators can layer on top of all their favorite games. By Imagine the endless breathing down your neck. <laughs> oriented to your Imagine. Audience. It took Imagine. me a while, but my <laughs> mind finally made it. Yep. <laughs> Creating challenges through state share allows us to continue creating content for all your favorite games long after the game itself has been completed. And on the other hand, the audience now can reconnect with all their favorite games in completely new, exciting, and fresh ways. But of course, also as a gamer, I'm looking forward to tremendously all the new possibilities. This is of kind of sounding like one of the Stadia things uh, in Google's history where they actually have a I mean, very interesting thing this. to play with a that no one ever adopts. Mm -hmm. Incredible new graphical possibilities. And of course, all of this is available across of course, any screen. Yeah, the first people who Literally, will, uh, my phone will use it and abuse it exactly where I left and will break it. <laughs> even while sitting in what an is going to be that? I remember like ordering, I watched the keynote. Keynote, you were. Um, Keynote, Keynote. Uh, 
it's Vinglish. For I think it was the Android Q. It was like this little media player with banana plugs, and I ordered one, and they gave it to me because they canceled it before they shipped it. About what Stadia brings to the table. How it unites technology and entertainment. But it was like an hour-long presentation how this thing was going to change and in ways the world. That can and only be possible uh -huh. through the combined power. Well, it's GDC. Everyone is making the next so best thing. So thank the Stadia team for having me in here today. I can't Google wait to Docs see what else great, you guys have. Don't be like that, bro, Joe. The rest of you on the floor <laughs> of GDC. Yeah. What's the next one to die? <laughs> YouTube or Google Docs? <laughs> Thanks, Ryan and Matt Pat. Connecting players and creators to their favorite games is core to our vision. Uh, okay, Google, We've shown get you good how scrub. YouTube and Stadia offer the ability for gamers to connect with content creators and game Create an AI that plays uh, Dark way. Souls and starts shouting, get good, get good! The, the new Google <laughs> Assistant will play your games for you, allowing you to stream them. Designers love creating well, you, you can provide commentary without having to play the game. People, the design problem of creating <laughs> you can just provide a reaction video. <laughs> When a player is stuck on a level or puzzle and desperately wants that next beat in the story or the breathtaking views in the next level, what do they do? Today, they have to leave the game, fire up YouTube, find the right video, scrub to the right part of that video, and watch how it's done. Turn my comedy Stadia, bit into reality, Google. Go ahead. Just mm -hmm. a button press away. Take this example from our friends at Crystal Dynamics with Rise of the Tomb Raider. When the player gets stuck on a level, like me, Instead of grabbing a laptop or a phone, they just need to push the button on the Stadia controller to get help from the Google Assistant. No oh, okay, they just show you uh, the, the video on how to do it. No secondary <laughs> devices needed. It can do picture in picture, okay. <laughs> it's another deep way in which we're connecting players with the games they love. Stadia is about Back in my day, you had to pause the game and search to Google. To their favorite content yeah. <laughs> With Stadia, any and nowadays everyone's got a phone an and a laptop or anything so else the around the house, literally. The entire <laughs> internet can become your store. Whether it's from our Stadia store, text messages, Reddit, Facebook, Twitter, Discord, Google search results, YouTube videos, Gmail, or from the Google Play Store, Gamers are going to be able to find, discover, and enjoy your games anywhere. Why did you just throw Gmail in there? I caught that. Easily you didn't mm -hmm. get that one by me. It's a truly revolutionary way to discover your games. Okay, so Stadia is Discord have, going to have games, Stadia integration to on top of the store, or is it going content. to be? It depends on whether or not the check We've already cleared. shipped development hardware to yeah. more than studios <laughs> around the world, and more than one thousand creators. That, that, and that, 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 that's a bit curious. I wonder if that's their Lytic support. <laughs> In addition to partnering with developers big and small, I'm also thrilled to announce that today. We are forming Stadia Games and Entertainment, which will build experiences designed exclusively for Stadia as Google's own first-party game studio. Man, if there's one thing Tech there demo is love, studio. it's exclusives, mm -hmm. man. Can't get enough of them. <laughs> I think it was Scott that brought up exclusivity earlier. The industry's <laughs> most successful executive producers to lead that organization. Ladies and gentlemen, well, support please the NVIDIA welcome the not head they can of help Stadia it. Games and Entertainment, <laughs> Jade Raymond. Hi, we're going to make a lot of tech Thank demos you, and not much of Thank anything you, everyone. else. everyone. I am so honored to be here. Collect the cookie. Stadia. In my career, I've been lucky enough to work with some of the most talented and passionate developers in the world. Passion is at the root of all great games, and it's what motivated me to join Google. What I love about games is that we continue to redefine what a game is. When I was 12, I saw the holodeck on an episode of Star Trek. What motivated and you to join Google was the, the paycheck, let's be honest. <laughs> I mean, it would certainly motivate me. <laughs> it got me out there, man. Me day, yeah, yeah. I'm not gonna lie, that was like, Fully Solid 50, world. 60% of like, all right. Today, you have seen yeah. <laughs> some incredible tech. And hopefully, like me, you now believe that we are on the brink of a huge revolution. Yeah, it's VR, in gaming. man. Can we flip? Um, in gaming. 
one that will unlock a whole new level of creativity for developers. There are no limits to the human imagination. Now that the data center is your platform, Oh, okay, you're not actually going to bring new technology, you're just, well. yeah. <laughs> Engrandizing hey, even further. Pedro, Pedro. <laughs> Google just invented game streaming, games all right? Have a little respect. <laughs> I will not only be bringing first-party game studios... On the corpses of OnLive and new generation of all the other ones. <laughs> Our team will also be working with external What was it, OnLive? Was it the original one? The bleeding edge yeah, Google that was like the most popular one. I don't know if it was the original, but it was the most popular, yeah. Partner <laughs> studios, big and small. We are committed... <laughs> ...to going Let her down talk. the gold path, <laughs> learning what is working best, and sharing key tools and tech so that we can take games to the next level together. Mm. The way I see it, there has never been a more exciting time to be a developer. That's and a lot Sega of vague will be bull crap, so chop chop. Defining the future <laughs> They're going to make games video games, man. Come on. <laughs> Thank you. No examples, no like videos of stuff you've you, Jay, already started working on. To Google. With Stadia, our goal is to combine the world of people who play games and the world of people who watch games into one global community you mentioned. by the best of Google. Oh, that's a bracelet. I thought he had we a hair tie around his wrist. With Stadia, <laughs> you'll be able to build your games backed by Google technology like Google Assistant, ML, and TensorFlow. You will be able to deliver your games to more gamers across the globe through Chrome, Chromecast, and Pixel. And you'll be able to connect with the biggest community of gamers and YouTube. Could we have a creators. word on quality so, assurance for games? How do you get involved? <laughs> They're not the Valve who want yet. To <laughs> have you seen the Android <laughs> Play Store <laughs> as of late? <laughs> where you can apply to get access to development tools. With if GTA Night Forts. We have Whatever. Stadia partners, mm -hmm. a program designed to give you the resources your team needs to make something great. And for players who want to be the first to learn more, you can go to stadia.com and follow us on these social channels. So, when will players be able to experience Stadia? Look under your chairs, I'm there's internet. To announce that Stadia is launching this year, 2019. Okay, so not yet. <laughs> And how about, you know, country availability? We will launch first in the US, Canada, the UK, and most of Europe. Oh, oh. It's been my privilege okay. today. Oh, to right. giving it to Pedro. <laughs> Boo. I don't want it anymore. <laughs> I can't lord it over him. This is the first step in the journey. And we'll most of Europe. Okay. In the summer <laughs> to share more details on the games you'll get to play at launch and beyond. Thank you very much for gathering around with all of us today. With Stadia, I did not expect we can that. all dream bigger hmm. and together build a playground for every imagination. Thank you. Okay. More trailer? Oh, it's the same one? No. no. Where we can all play <laughs> in a garage. <laughs> all kinds of games. Cage. Cave Across all kinds of screens. In space, it's a cave garage in space. <laughs> it's just a click. It's what like if your controller man. doesn't click? <laughs> no download. That's a lie. You're downloading the video that you're playing. <laughs> if I ever have to hire a forensics guy, Scott, you're on the short list. <laughs> Stadia. Okay. SD Steam Stadia. I see what they went for. I don't know. So what do we think? <laughs> At the end of the day, we're gonna get a controller. They didn't say anything about pricing, period. Nope. Didn't say anything about bandwidth requirements. Didn't get that. Um we don't know what the service tiers are going to be, what's gonna be available. Mm -hmm. Basically we got a whole lot of uh Look at the monkey. All right, get off stage. Yeah, it's uh, look at all the shinies we've made. 
Although the quote unquote promise of UK and most of Europe along with US and Canada, that's a welcome change because to this day, the Google Play podcasts are still not available in the UK. They've region locked podcasts, so that's different. <laughs> Speaking of podcast, I updated our cover art. Ooh. Yeah. Your face is on it still, so I know you'll love it. Um, <laughs> yeah, the streaming quality. If we assume everyone has California internet, then we'd be in bad shape. A lot of California doesn't have good internet. No. <laughs> California's a big place. Um, like, average California internet is not very good. <laughs> That's the thing, though. I mean, if the controller's under, like, 50 watt stinky caches, I'll probably pick one up just to have it. Yeah, something like 40 pounds. Yeah. Yeah, I better be able to Chromecast to my monitor, though. Mm-hmm. Speaking and of apparently bad internet, my, <laughs> my internet decided, no, we're having none of that. <laughs> at least we don't have that UK internet. Um, <laughs> oh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, give it a little bit. Usually when you your other instance bounces out, it cleans up. Yeah, that's the thing. I didn't even fall out of the thing. It just dropped. Ah. Google's on to you, man. You said something bad about the podcast. Like, <laughs> they were they were listening the whole time. <laughs> yeah, there's Australian internet. Hard yeah, mode. yeah. <laughs> that is Australia mode right there. That's the, uh, you can definitely say, hey man, if you have fiber in Australia, you'd be like, I have fiber and I hope the cache, the caching server is located in Australia. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that was the thing. Because otherwise I'm still looking at over 200 um, milliseconds of latency. Yeah. <laughs> Go away. That's the trailer. Yeah. That was the thing. All right, I just need something to pause. Uh, that was interesting. Well, it was the Google Stadia. The, like, forefront of Linux and Vulkan was definitely very welcome, but as you mentioned, no pricing, no concrete date of availability. They say it's this year, so it's still a long way until December 31st. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. It, it's, it's shiny. It's running Linux. Yeah, it's running Vulkan. Linux and Vulkan, this is good. And it's going to drive you crazy knowing a lot of these titles. I want to know exactly how they're running it because we were theorizing, you know, even with Assassin's Creed, I was like, wait a minute, does that mean they got the, like this custom built? Mm -hmm. And both you and Jordan were like, no, nah, man, it's just on a VM, man. Yeah, because that's what makes the most sense and it would be the most cost effective way to get it to work. Also, you get that. Uh, hardware abstraction that's very important if you're trying to feed it controller inputs it might go through the trouble of Vulcan better performance <laughs> I mean if the KVM can already get very close to the processor then getting very close to the GPU is also a good thing right <laughs> I'll, I'll reserve comment I, I don't think this thing's spooled up in your traditional like VX works stack most likely not <laughs> but you know, the, what's the over and under on anyone actually ever finding out? <laughs> I don't listen, man. If you're a server RGP repair person, you might be able to sneak a peek next time the RGBs mm -hmm. go down. <laughs> <laughs> if you're an interior designer with a focus on the inside of server rooms, yes. <laughs> Uh, also, I want to meet you, call me. <laughs> Maybe we could get the hoobis off. I don't know. Hey, man, th thanks for cutting out of work early. I know that was torture for you. You hate leaving work um, for the scheduled time. I mean, today, admittedly, it was a slow day. There's a lot of people taking time off because it's the end of the financial year and everyone has to take those days off. Mm -hmm. So it's it's been a bit slow. So, yeah. I just okay. asked David I, Nathan, it's like, can I duck out a little bit early? He's like, yeah, cool. <laughs> I, I didn't want you to burn a dead grandma to get out early. So <laughs> <laughs> you, 
<laughs> you only get two of those at each job. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> mm. All right. It's been fun. It's been real. Thanks, everybody, for showing up live. Um, that was interesting. Come check us out tomorrow. We're not going to be talking about gaming, just regular uh, open source Linuxy stuff on weekly, daily Wednesdays. That'll go down at three o'clock.